What we're going to do today is make some curtains. A friend of mine bought a bed set for her son. It's like um, dinosaurs, bright coloured dinosaurs, and she got these sheets. Um, she don't need the sheets, but she needs curtains. So what we're going to do is take the sheets that came with the set and make curtains from it. And if we have enough left, we're going to make a headboard too. And then when I'm doing the curtains, what I like to do is take the width from the side of the window to the other. And if it's a smallish window, um, I'll make one panel that width so that when you close the curtain, you've got plenty of gathering, you know, to make it look nice, to make it hang nice. We're going to line the curtains today as well. Um, as you can see, um, it's nice bright colours with black. And we went through her cupboards and she had a couple of old black sheets. Um, one of them's been cut out at the bottom, but I think that's, it's going to be long enough. Her windows are quite narrow, but they're wide, um, long. So I've measured them, and lucky for me, which stops me having to measure and cut, the width of the window from side to side was this wide. So that will be one panel. And so all I've got to do is literally fold the sheet in half and cut it. Now, if the window was a different size, what you would do is you'd measure, and then you would just put pins along, or if you're lucky enough to have stripes, you just take it where the pins are, just measure the width you want and cut. Now, we don't want to be carrying a load of material around us, so the next thing I do is to measure the length of the window. I go from just above the window, and these ones are going to be almost hitting the floor. So it was 84 inches. Um, these are going to be tab top curtains, so that will add another four inches to them. So altogether it's going to be about 86 inches. So I'm going to measure the 84. And usually that usually leaves you room for a hem. Well, I'm, I'm using the bottom of the sheet, so I won't need to hem it anyway. So I'm going to make these 82 because I've already got my hem on. Okay, 82 is right to the end here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it. Um, you can use pins, but I prefer, prefer to use like a pen, pencil, something like that. This is like a pencil that you can use for quilting. I'm going to go ahead and move that over and I'll mark again. And lucky for me, I've got some straight lines, but it's not too bad. All you've got to do is use your, you know, judgment and see if the tape measure's pretty straight. I usually, I don't like to leave too wide in between where I measure because I'm not very good at judging things. <laughs> now you can lay this, if you don't have a, a countertop that's this big, just lay it out on the floor and um, do the same thing. Um, we're going to lay the sheet out on the floor, the, the one that we're going to use as a liner. You can pick these up at Walmart for a few bucks. Um, I'm not sure what size this one is, but it works out cheaper if you're going to make curtains to get a king size because you'll be able to get both set both curtains out of the king size. Whereas on a, a twin set, you might need two of these, and it works out cheaper to buy one king size than two. You just want the flat sheet. That's all you want in a pack. Um, I'm going to lay this out on the floor, and because it's black on both sides, it doesn't really matter what way it goes. So we're just going to lay that out. Now I've laid the sheet on the floor and the pieces of curtain that I've cut, what you're going to do is you're going to lay them on top and the right side is going to be down, facing downwards, because you're going to have to sew along the side. So just go ahead and lay it out. It's best if you iron everything really well first, which I haven't necessarily done here. And, and to be honest with you, if you have a carpet, it's much better to lay it on the carpet as well because it doesn't slip and slide as much. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Just keep smoothing it out. And I like to get the bottom bit kind of where I want it. And then go ahead and start putting your pins in. Um, once you've um, pinned it all out, just go ahead and cut around the edge. I said, don't have to be exact. That's one down, let's do the next one. Okay, we've gone ahead and cut out the two panels. What I'm gonna do now is cut out the tabs for the top. I like them about two inches wide, 
and usually about three and a half to four inches apart when they're on the curtain. So I'm going to need about 14 of them all together. So I'm going to go ahead and start measuring. Just measure the, um, I want them about two inches wide, so I'm going to measure two and a half. And it's safe keep messing around. I'm just going to go ahead and do along two and a half, five, seven and a half, and so on. And I'll go and do that along. I like them about three and a half inches in length when they're hanging on the window. So I'm going to do it, take them down eight inches. Actually, I'll go along the whole length of the material and just cut it off and then cut them into their little two inch strips, two and a half inch strips. I usually find that about a three and a half inch drop is, is good. No, I know it's eight inches, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut So it. I'll just go ahead and measure the two and a half inches all the way across. Now I'm going to go ahead and do exactly the same on the lined, the material for the lining. I mean, if you're going to line the curtains, you might as well line the tabs as well. I'm measuring eight inches. You can make them so the tabs longer. All you do is like do it to nine, ten inches. You can have them narrower or wider, depending on what you want. Okay, I've measured eight inches down. I'm just going to go ahead and cut across. Oops. <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and cut out my two and a half inch pieces. Okay, we're just going to cut these and then we're all ready to start the sewing. For those of you who say that you can't sew, if you can press your foot down, you can sew. Um, and I'm going to show you once we get on the machine how easy it is. Um, if you get a piece of spare material and just practice going up and down, up and down in straight lines, get your sewing machine ready. What's going to be the top of the curtain? Because you're not going to sew all the way to the bottom because when you measure it up against the window, you may need to adjust the length. Although you've measured everything, sometimes it just don't come out right. So we're going to go here. And if you see on the machine, there's little tiny lines. And all you've got to do really, you can either level it up with the edge of the foot or pick one of these lines and just follow it. Okay, let's go. And most machines have this little button so you can go back over. As you see, I'm just keeping it along the edge of mine. Keep it along the edge of the orange there. Oop, there's a needle. Let's get him out. And then just sew until you're within a couple of inches of the bottom. Do this on all four sides of your curtain. As I say, stop a couple of inches from the bottom because um, no matter how much you measure, sometimes they don't come out exact and we're going to have to put them on the window to level them up. Okay? Now I'm just doing the last side of the curtain. That would be the four side seams done on the two, pair, the two panels. Okay, now I've sewn along the sides, I'm going to go ahead and take out the pins that we put in there to cut. Okay, now go ahead, turn the curtains in the right way. And before I go any further, what I like to do, see, look, I've left a little thing at the bottom so that we can adjust it if necessary. Um, what I like to do is go ahead and press the seams because when you hang them up, you don't want them all like lumpy at the side. Go ahead and sew the tabs while we've got the sewing machine out. You take the side, the right side, and you put it facing inwards like this. You can pin it if you want, or you could just go ahead and sew. Now what I do, save messing around, I just go ahead and get all of them and sew them at one time. And when you're sewing, before you go on to the next tab, just make sure that you back up the stitches to make it secure. I've sewn along one side, looks like a big sausage. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just cut this and then I'll just... Turn it around and sew along the other side. That is so much easier this way. You don't have to keep picking it up and putting it down. And here comes the fun bit. What we've got to do is turn these in side into the right way. Now we've got all the pieces of material sewn together. There's the tabs all nice and flat. And then we're going to go ahead and put these tabs in. Um, the best thing to do, in my opinion, <laughs> 
is, I'm going to move this pin down a bit, it's in the way, is to go ahead, because you don't want this bit showing, go ahead and just turn over the top of the material about half an inch, quarter of an inch, whatever you want, um, but make sure it's the same all the way across. So this one we're going to do about half an inch. Now usually I just fold it as I go along, but if you haven't made these before, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and just pin half an inch down all the way across. Okay, when you've done along the lining of the curtain, go ahead, turn it over and do the same on the other side. Okay, I'm gonna put my glasses on for this one. This is where the fun begins. Get the material nice and spread out like this. Make sure the ends are like that. Sometimes, we, even if you measure this up right so all the ends are matching, when you sew it, the sewing machine tends to push the material one way and you'll have some hanging over at the end. Don't worry about that, just sew straight over the top of it. What we're gonna do is just go ahead and fold these in half, like this. And then starting at the very end, you can go like that and pin it on. Just pin it on there so the pin is right near the edge, holding it in. Now what you need to do at this point is measure. Okay. So if you measure from the end of this tab, measure about three and a half inches along. They don't have to be exact. Get the next one, fold it in half, put it in, make sure you've still got it about three and a half inches apart, move it along till it's in place, and then go ahead, make sure the back of the material is about level with the front, hold it down and then measure. What you can do as you're going along is just take out the pins that you put to hold it in place so you know where to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and slip this pin out, but now I'll slip it on the outside to hold everything in place for when I'm sewing. So the top of the material I put level with this side of the foot and then just get sewing. Now I've finished putting all the tabs on. The last one I put on, there was only just three inches in between, but it doesn't really matter. It won't show when you get them on the window. I mean, they don't have to be exact as I keep saying. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, I'll put my glasses on, we're going to go ahead and just sew along the top here just like we did before. Well I've just finished up the curtains as you saw I've sewn across the top. I've hung them up in the bedroom. Let's go and take a look at them. Well here they are hung up. You can see the tabs across the top. Um, the seams are going to need pressing again to make them hang a little bit better. Remember when I started making the curtains, I used the hem of the sheets as the bottom of the curtain. So I won't have to go ahead and sew anything now. But if you use material to make these curtains, what you need to do is just grab the two curtains together, pull them down and make sure they're the same length. If for some reason they're not the same length, because sometimes you sew one hem seam a little longer than the other, if they're not the same length, you need to just go ahead Get a pin, pin them up until they're both equal. I say this one don't need doing, but just pin them till they're both equal and then just go ahead and sew them on the sewing machine or sew them by hand. And we've used one sheet. We have enough left to, we have the bottom sheet left to make a headboard to go in the boys' room to match it. And that will be in my next video is how to make a basic, simple headboard with the bottom sheet. Thank you. If you like what we've done today, please go ahead, like, share and subscribe to this video and go ahead and check out my other videos. We've got plenty of stuff that you could maybe enjoy doing. Okay, thank you.